What's going on, guys? Neil Orfield here, and I'm going to show you how I will be setting up my fantasy cruncher for tonight's single game slate between the Commanders and the Bears. This is for FanDuel, and I'm going to be setting this up for the largest field GPP. I might take a slightly different approach if I were uh, playing cash games or if I'm playing small field GPPs. There are things that I'm going to do in this video that I would not do if I'm playing those smaller field GPPs or cash games, such as leaving salary on the table and using players with really low projections. You don't really need to do that uh, in cash games or in smaller field GPPs. But this video is just about large field GPPs, and this is how I will be setting up my Fantasy Cruncher. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the optimal lineups. Just going to crunch out 10 of the most optimal lineups to see what kind of uh what the lineups look like and how much salary is left on the table so the optimal lineup leaves five hundred dollars on the table sixty thousand a lot of these lineups using uh close to or uh totally the entire full salary cap so that is good to know that means that you're more more likely to be able to get a little bit different by leaving some salary on the table. That's what I like to see. I thought because this is such a low scoring game that maybe that would not be the case, uh, but it's good to see that the prices are efficient. So uh, more likely we're going to see a lot of lineups that do use the full salary cap. Also see right, right away, the optimal lineup uses Carson Wentz without any other, uh, without any Washington pass catchers. Uh, so that might be something that I try to group out. I might say if I have Carson Wentz in a flex spot, I need at least one uh, pass catcher elsewhere for the commanders. I don't always do that on FanDuel. I'm not sure if I will, um, but I'm going to see if that uh, comes up kind of a lot. But first thing I'll do, I'm going to set a cap on my MVP. Uh, actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my columns so that they look how I want them to. So I'm going to go to quick views. I've got a quick view saved that has my columns set up the way I want them to with my projection. Uh, my exposures on different players, what their ownership projection is, et cetera, in the middle of the page. That's what I like to look at when making adjustments. So I want that in the middle of the page. Then I'll go to advanced options. Oh, no, sorry. Then I'm going to go to the MVP spot and I'm going to set exposure caps on every player in the MVP spot. For now, I'm just going to use 20%. That changes slate to slate. But for this one, 20% seems about right. Then I'll go into advanced options and the two tabs I use here are the general tab and the groups tab, starting with the general tab, unique players per lineup. I'm making 150 lineups. I don't mind if they're all, if some of them are very similar to each other, just one player apart. So I'm going to leave this at one unique player per lineup. If you're making 20 or fewer lineups, I would suggest changing that to two so that you have a little bit of diversification within your lineups. It's a matter of personal preference, but that is what I would do. As far as the salary cap, I don't set a minimum. If I leave, if uh, a lineup projects really well and leaves a lot of salary on the table in a large field GPP, that is fantastic. I love to see that. Uh, but I do set a maximum so that I don't use those lineups that use a full $60,000 salary. FanDuel, we're using $500 increments. I'm going to set this at 59000 so in every lineup we make, we're leaving at least $1,000 on the table. The reason being, we don't want to have lineups that are duplicated. 2,000 times. We just saw uh, the the, light, the latest single game slate. We saw a lineup duplicated nearly 2,000 times. It was a $200,000 to first contest, and everybody won $200 of the winners. So I don't want to have that uh, in my range of outcomes. If I am lucky enough to win the contest, it takes a lot of luck. No matter how well your lineup projects, no matter how correlated it is, it takes a lot of luck to win these showdown slates. If I get lucky enough to win the slate, I want to win significant money i don't want to be winning 200 dollars because for me especially when i'm playing 150 lineups that is going to be a loss uh but even if you're not playing 150 lineups, even if you're playing one lineup those lineups are still negative ev long term um, you're not going to win frequently enough for that 200 dollars to be worth it so i want to be playing lineups that are uh, a little bit more unique so i'm going to leave at least a thousand dollars on the table i think that probably i'm actually going to set this at 58 500 for now uh i might i'm probably going to use even lower than this um, but for the purpose of this video we're going to leave 1500 dollars on the table i think it makes sense on this slate i think uh the projections are not high enough that we're guaranteed to see those top projected players in the winning lineup i think that there's more opportunity here for some of the cheaper players to sneak in there if they can score a touchdown or just have a surprisingly big game okay offensive players versus defense the default is two I'm going to set that to four. I don't mind at all if I get four players from one team against the defense of the other team, especially in a game like this where 
one of these one of these offenses might not put up <coughs> any fantasy points or certainly not many fantasy points in which case the defense could uh, pretty reasonably be expected to be the highest scoring play from that team if they get a pick six or something you know that might be their their best opportunity to score points in this game so i don't mind having four from one team versus the defense of the other team in some of my lineups global exposure cap is set to 100 percent. i showed you i already changed my mvp to a 20 percent cap but everywhere else i'm going to leave it at 100 percent for now if i get too much of players later on i can adjust as necessary randomness i'm going to set to 50 percent. this is of course using normal distribution randomness uh, if you're using classic randomness i might set it lower 40 percent, 30 percent, and of course the more control you want over your lineups the less you set that randomness to. I know some pros who don't use randomness at all because they want to have complete control over what their lineups look like. That is not how I play. <coughs> I like to use randomness as a way to get to some lineups that maybe other people don't have. So I use 50% randomness, uh, but it's all a matter of personal preference there. And then players from each team max. As I said, I don't mind those onslaught lineups with four from one team against one player from the opposing team. I don't mind those at all. So I'm going to leave that at four. And then I'll get to my groups and I'll start a group with fields in the MVP spot. So for this group, I'm gonna go find fields MVP and make him my key player. He's gonna be the only key player in this group. So this entire group is focused around lineups with fields in the MVP spot. <coughs> now I'm gonna add some bears, pass catchers, to the secondary group. Hey guys, if you're a new Stochastic Plus Platinum or NFL user and want to give our NFL DFS tools a test run before purchasing, we have a great offer for you. Get access to all of our NFL DFS tools 100% free for three days. This includes full access to all the premium content and tools for NFL DFS that we have to offer on Stochastic.com, including new, new tools such as our lineup generator and player compare, as well as player projections, ownership projections, top stacks, our boom bust tool, and so much more. Click the link in the description of this video below to join to activate your three-day free trial now please note that fantasy cruncher is an add-on and is not included with this trial offer i'm not going to bother adding the running backs to this they're just not that involved in the passing game for the bears uh, you could consider adding uh, khalil herbert in particular is a little bit more involved but you know both khalil herbert and david montgomery have run under 50 routes so far this year uh, i would if i were making a must include at least one player from the group i would probably include them but for justin fields i think i'm going to only apply plus minus adjustments so in this group i'm not requiring any of these pass catchers to be in the lineup when i have fields at mvp but i am going to give boosts so i'm more likely in lineups that have fields at mvp to get to some bears pass catchers elsewhere in the lineup As I'm thinking about, maybe I will add Khalil Herbert. <coughs> to that second group and give him a little bit of a boost. Okay, good enough. Uh, so Fields, you know, he's not the best rusher in the league, but he is a very, he, he's a top tier or uh, maybe just a second tier rusher. He's only had one game in his career so far where he's reached a hundred rushing yards, but he regularly rushes for around 50 yards. So I think those spike weeks are possible. I think he's going to have some spike weeks this year rushing, in which case uh, if he has a, enough upside rushing, doesn't necessarily bring any pass catches along with him, even in the captain spot. So I'm not requiring them, but Still, he's probably going to put up some fantasy points by throwing the ball. So uh, I'm making it more likely that when I have fields in the MVP spot, if he puts up enough fantasy points to be in the MVP, he's probably done some of that work through the air as well. So I'm going to give boost to his pass catchers uh, because I think more likely if fields is the optimal MVP, at least one of his pass catchers is going to be somewhere in the lineup as well. But as I said, not requiring it just because he does have that rushing upside. make a secondary group Wentz in the MVP spot this is just for lineups that have Wentz at MVP 
going to make Wentz MVP my key player. Same thing, except now I'm adding the Washington pass catchers to this group. And with Washington, the uh, running backs are a little bit more involved as pass catchers. So I'm going to include them. In particular, McKissick and Gibson have been pretty involved in the passing game so far this year. All right, so I've added all of the pass catchers to the flex. Now for Wentz, definitely not using the only apply plus minus adjustments. Wentz rushed for 215 total yards last year, so somewhere around there, uh, in 17 full games. So he's not particularly great rusher at this point in his career uh, i do think he still has some rushing upside he could you know fall into the end zone so i think that wentz could be the optimal mvp without uh bringing two pass catchers along with him so i think i'm going to leave this at use at least one pass catcher when i have Wentz at the mvp and then just give boost to his receivers to make it more likely that when i have Wentz in the mvp spot in more of those lineups i'm going to have multiple commanders pass catchers and for here i'm also going to give a little bit of a boost to jd mckissick and antonio gibson who have been involved as pass catchers but again not requiring to at least for now if i get too many lineups that have wentz in the mvp spot with uh no pass catchers else with only one pass catcher elsewhere in the lineup i might go back and change this i want i wouldn't mind seeing it a few times in 150 i probably don't want to see it in 30 of my lineups because i do think that more likely if Wentz is the optimal mvp he's bringing along multiple pass catchers all right now i could make a group i think i will make a group right away that is Wentz in the flex spot we saw the optimal lineup had Wentz as the only washington player in it in the flex spot and that could happen on on FanDuel if he you know if he falls into the end zone. There, there's no PPR bonus, so it makes it a little bit more likely that you know if he does a little bit with his legs and spreads the ball around, he could be uh, in the optimal as the only Washington Commanders player in the flex spot. But he still every time he throws the ball, his uh, his pass catcher outscores him on each play. So more likely in more of my lineups, I'd rather see if I have Wentz in a flex spot, I would rather see some Commanders pass catcher elsewhere in the lineup. So I'm going to go ahead and add all of these commanders pass catchers once again. And then I'm going to also add the better projected pass catchers uh, in the MVP spot because now we have Wentz in the flex spot. So we can also add them as MVPs. And you don't need to go too low here just because on FanDuel there is no salary multiplier. So if a player doesn't project all that well, he's probably not going to make it into too many lineups as the MVP anyway. So don't need to look too closely, but okay, good enough. Uh, and I'm going to say, now here's a question. Do I, do I want to have some lineups with Wentz in the flex with no other commanders? As I said, I think that that could theoretically get there. So maybe I'll say only apply plus minus adjustments. Of course, now I need to give boost to all of these players. If I don't give them boosts, then there's no point in having them in the group. So I'll just give little boosts to make it a little bit more likely that I get to some of these commanders pass catchers in the lineup if I have Wentz in the flex spot. And again, this is, I've said it before, this is uh, not science at all. This is more art. Uh, if the lineups are not looking the way I want them to after a crunch, I can come back and change the kinds of boosts that I give or require at least one player. A lot of things you can do. I just, this is a pretty good starting point, I think, to just see 
make the lineups look a little bit more how I want them to. I'm not even going to make a Fields in the flex spot group just because he does have a lot more rushing upside than Carson Wentz does. All right, good enough. Uh, one thing, I, I don't think I went over this. Uh, I did not change the minimum projection included in calculation that the default is three. So currently I can't get any player into my lineups who has a projection below three. I think I'll probably keep that at three and maybe I will adjust uh, projections if I need to on some players who maybe project for fewer than three fantasy points. All right, and now I'm going to just crunch 150 lineups and see what they look like. All right, so we see right away the first lineup, Justin Fields in the MVP spot. I didn't require any Bears pass catchers, but I did give boost, so I got to three different Bears pass catchers in the flex spot and commander's defense in the flex. So we've got quarterback in the MVP spot versus the opposing defense. This lineup could work if the Bears, you know, win the game 17 to 0, 20 to 0, whatever, whatever uh, and the uh, commanders don't put up any points on offense. Theoretically, you know, if Fields throws a pick six, somebody fumbles, the commander's defense scores a touchdown, somehow uh, that's fine. Then then they could be the highest scoring play for the commanders, get a couple, you know, sacks, turnovers here and there. Uh, they could be the, the highest scoring play for the commanders, assuming the offense doesn't do a whole lot. Um, and then, you know, that negatively impacts the Bears offense, of course, if the commander's defense is doing well. But if they get those points again with like a pick six or something, the Bears offense just gets the ball right back. It doesn't impact them all that much negatively. I think Fields loses one, maybe maybe two points for an interception. So it hurts them. But then they get the ball right back and are in position to score again. So I don't want to see it in every lineup if I see it in, you know, a handful of lineups uh, with Fields in the MVP spot and the commander's defense in the flex. I don't mind that at all. Here we've got Carson Wentz in the MVP spot with just one pass catcher in the flex. Again, I don't want to see that in 30 lineups. If I see it in 5, 10 lineups in 150 set, I don't mind seeing it um, because Wentz does have a little bit of upside on the ground. Uh, but in general, if I have Wentz in the MVP spot more often, I would rather see uh, multiple commanders pass catchers in the flex. Good. We've got Wentz with pass catchers in the flex, David Montgomery in the MVP spot. That makes sense to me. Curtis Samuel in the MVP spot. Uh, as you saw, no Carson Wentz down here. No need to have Carson Wentz in the lineup just because you have Curtis Samuel in the MVP spot. Um, but this would be a little bit tough because now we need John Bates. I guess he's cheap enough so he doesn't need to outscore uh, Carson Wentz. So yeah, I think this works. This lineup makes some sense. Um, Cairo Santos in the MVP spot. So I guess we could have, you know, this is a game where it's more likely than usual that a kicker ends up as the optimal MVP. On FanDuel in general, the MVP is going to be the highest scoring player in the game. So this does assume a very low scoring game, but could happen. Bears put up some points on the ground. Mooney gets a few PPR points <coughs> and the game ends. Nine to six Bears, this lineup could work out. Wentz with Bates, Fields with Mooney, good correlation there. Wentz now with two pass catchers in the flex spot. One of them being a running back is not ideal, but works out. Now we see Fields again in the MVP spot with the commanders at flex. Not my favorite, but I'll allow it here and there. All right, so in general, I don't hate these lineups. Here's one with Wentz in the flex spot with no Washington pass catchers anywhere else in the lineup. Could work if Wentz, you know, scores a rushing touchdown, obviously, or picks up 30 yards on the ground, spreads the ball around, uh, throwing the ball, could theoretically be the captain with no pass catchers in a low-scoring game. Sorry, in the flex spot uh, as the only Washington Commanders player with uh, a low-scoring game. All right, so in general, these lineups look okay. They're not my favorite. Maybe I'll want to go back and add little uh, bigger boosts for, you know, Wentz in the flex spot, make sure that they, that I'm more likely to get some of those players or also with Wentz in the MVP spot. Again, we're seeing Wentz in the MVP with just one of his pass catchers. So I think that maybe I'll go back and give bigger boosts when I have Wentz in the MVP in particular, just give slightly bigger boosts, make it a little bit more likely that I get to his pass catchers when I have Wentz in the MVP spot. And make it more likely i'm going to get to at least one because i did not set this as only apply plus minus but i'm making it more likely to get two by giving bigger boost there 
I also just, uh, I can look at my individual players. I have the minimum projection to be included set at three. Uh, currently not getting to a ton of the running backs outside of McKissick and Montgomery, a decent amount. Uh, maybe that's something I want to change. Maybe I want a little bit more Khalil Herbert. Give him a little bit of a boost. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to approach actual players, how much I'm going to want of them. Um, that's something that I will work on as I crunch my lineups and think about what do I want them to look at? How do I like players relative to their ownership? Terry McLaurin, I think, looks a little bit underowned at 17%. Hasn't been great this year. He's still more expensive than Curtis Samuel, who has been great this year. But if the ownership is going to come down to 17% on a player like Terry McLaurin, I think I'm actually going to try and get above the field there. Not sure yet exactly what I'm going to do, but these are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. Vilas Jones currently not getting into any. He could not make it into my player set because he's only projected for one fantasy points. I have the minimum set to three. I think I'd love to see some Vilas Jones in my lineups at 0.2% ownership. The reason being, he's 6,500. If he scores one touchdown, and they, they had a design play for him in their last game, his first touch of his career last game. He played three snaps. One of them was the first play of his career. Uh, he touched the ball and scored a touchdown. So they designed a play for him. He's a speedy rookie. I think uh, you know he's live to score a touchdown, and I would like to have him in some lineups at 0.2% projected ownership on FanDuel. Nikhil Harry currently can't make it into my player set. Smith Marset currently can't make it in. So I'm just giving these guys a little boost to make sure that they're at least uh, viable options who could make it into my player set. And again, all of them very low owned. If they are active tonight, I'm probably going to be above the field on these guys uh, and just hope that nobody else has them and they score a fluky touchdown. Happens all the time. People are always surprised, but uh, happens more slates than not. You see a fluky touchdown. So uh, I'm going to put these players in my player set. Tight end, getting to a little bit of Cole Komet, not getting to any Ryan Griffin. Maybe I'll give him a little bit of a boost. I don't even know if I'm going to want any Trevon Wesco. That's not a high priority for me. I will want some Cole Turner. He was pretty involved last week in his first uh, NFL game. Maybe Armani Rogers. I don't know. Haven't made decisions about how I'm actually who I'm actually going to be playing yet, um, but these are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. I'm just looking at... How do players project relative to other players? How much am I getting relative to their ownership projections? These are my thoughts as I'm doing this. Getting to a good amount of these defenses. So is everybody else. Uh, not going to change projections on defenses. And most likely I'm going to get to less of the defenses because every projection is relative to every other projection. So I've been giving boost elsewhere, which makes it a little bit less likely that I get to spots where I'm not giving boosts. And then I'll crunch again, see what comes out. As you can see, I'm getting to 87% Justin Fields somewhere in my lineup. I don't hate that. Justin Fields has all the upside in the world with his legs uh, and through the air. Here you can see Justin Fields with no other Bears pass catchers. I don't mind seeing that. Wouldn't want it in every lineup, but uh, if I see it you know, in, in several, that's not a huge concern for me. I am seeing it pretty regularly here where I'm getting Justin Fields with no Bears pass catchers. Um, again, not the end of the world for me. I don't know if I want it as much as I have it here. So maybe I go back and make a group with Fields in the flex and give a little boost to Bears pass catchers. Uh, that's an approach to you know, minimize some of these lineups. <laughs> and maybe I wouldn't include David Montgomery in those lineups just because he projects so well naturally and also is not extremely involved in the passing game. Uh, so maybe that's an approach I would take is making some, giving a little boost to the uh, more involved pass catchers in lineups that have Justin Fields at flex. But anyway, this is what I do. I look through my lineups. Do they correlate the way I want them to? And then I also look at uh, individual players? Am I getting to exposure levels that I like? Maybe I want to give bigger boosts. I'm getting to a lot of Cole Turner here. You know, I wanted to get to some Cole Turner. I don't know that I really want 31%. So maybe I lower this projection slightly. I do this incrementally and I crunch it out several times until I get to approximately where I want on each player. Still not getting a lot of Terry McLaurin. Oops. Uh, so maybe I'll give him your boost. Jones again, 
I want to get above the field at 0.2% ownership. 4% might be fine. I might be a little bit more aggressive, give them a little bit of a bigger boost. I haven't decided yet exactly what my approach will be, but there are a lot of these players. This is a slate where we've got a lot of players who are projected for very little ownership who could reasonably uh, have a spike week by scoring a touchdown or a few big catches. So, um, you know, I'm probably going to be spread out on a lot of these kind of low owned guys as well. And running back, get into a little more Brian Robinson after giving him a boost. Still not getting into much Khalil Herbert. Maybe I'll go back and adjust these. Uh, again, haven't decided exactly what I want my lineup to look like yet. Um, but this is my general approach. And then I'll end up crunching several times, looking at the lineups, looking at player exposures. Do my lineups look the way I want them to? Am I getting to you know the amount of different players that I want to get to? This is my thought process. And I'll just adjust my groups and I'll adjust projections. Generally, for newer players, I don't recommend adjusting the projections too much because they are great projections. Uh, the projections are better than I could do. Um, I make adjustments just relative to the ownership projections, but it's all also, uh, it's I, I'm using them as a starting place and I'm keeping in mind what the uh, original projections are as I do it. Anyway, I've got a meeting to get to, uh, so I am going to end it here, but uh, this is the same process that I use on every slate. I'm changing projections here and there. If you're newer, I would suggest using the thumbs up, thumbs down, with the exception of uh, some players who uh, have low enough projections that they couldn't make it into your play out, player set. If you have the minimum set at three and they project below three, you're not going to get to them. So you'll need to give a little bit of a projection boost there for some players. But otherwise, for the higher projected players, you can generally just use the thumbs up and thumbs down to get more or less of players as you like, uh, and then adjust groups as necessary. So that is my general process. Good luck tonight. Hope you can find some success using this or a similar process.